Yesterday, Joe Biden was inaugurated. I don't know if anyone watched it. I didn't, but I'm told it happened. And so I believe it because I'm actually, I'm trying to adjust my behavior to prepare myself for the next few years by just believing everything that the screen people tell me. So screen people say Joe Biden's president. Hell yeah. I salute President Dementia, and I'm going to put out a video uh, with my final thoughts about the Trump presidency. But for now, I'll just say that there's almost something kind of nice about this. You know how like when a when a piece of pizza matches in size all the other pieces of pizza or when like a refrigerator fits perfectly in the spot in, in the wall? Because like, yeah, we had Trump in the White House, but it's not like literally every other component of the country wasn't a total joke because we're simply just not a serious country anymore. And so it's almost better that we have someone like Joe Biden representing us now. Someone as incompetent as Joe Biden representing the country. The circus is finally complete. That's the chef's kiss on the accelerating decline of the American nation. But anyways, we got to go speedy quick because I got a plane to catch. So we're going to go through the five biggest red flags that you should be watching out for and paying attention to right now. A lot of it is stuff that was predicted by us um, as far as what was going to happen a few months ago. Now it's actually happening. Nonetheless, very important stuff. Very epic. Do stay tuned. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. We're going speedy quick. I've got to get to Arizona. And actually, if you're watching this right now, it means that I'm already in Arizona giving the speech. Very exciting stuff. But before we get into that, we do have to point out that we are living in uncertain times. And millions have come to realize the importance of the Second Amendment. If you're looking for the perfect accessory to go with that perfect firearm, get an American-made holster from my friends over at We The People Holsters, starting at just $40. We The People Holsters are custom model to fit your exact firearm. They have thousands of options, including an amazing selection of printed holsters. Their proprietary clip design allows for you to easily adjust both the cant and ride of your holster so that it's comfortable and secure at all times. You go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. While you're there, check out their premium printed hoodies, long sleeve shirts, and their new EDC tactical gun belt, which comes paired with the patented Cobra buckle. Every holster and gun belt come with a lifetime guarantee. If it's not a perfect fit, send it back for a full refund. WeThePeopleHolsters.com slash Doyle. Get an additional $10 off with the offer code Doyle. WeThePeopleHolsters.com slash Doyle. WeThePeopleHolsters.com slash Doyle. Very epic. Getting into our list of five red flags. We have the first one, which is the manufactured victory. The appearance of victory being totally manufactured. Just like in a banana republic, you've got thousands of soldiers protecting the establishment politicians from the threats of those over whom they wish to govern. That inauguration was very weird. It's weird that the most popular president in the history of our country didn't have a massive crowd, and I think we all know why. They'll say, well, it's because of security threats or it's because of the virus, which of course didn't matter when autonomous zones were being set up or when cities were being burned, thousands were rallying without masks in close proximity, but that's what they'll say now, even despite the fact that who the media are calling the capital terrorists are basically just a bunch of mischievous baby boomers, but I digress. The point being, that if it were Trump, people would have showed up by the hundreds of thousands, even if the city were locked down. If the city were locked down, then Trump's people would have just gathered in the outskirts, outside of the perimeter. The real reason that this was done is because of optics, and apparently people call me the Prince of Optics, and so I can speak to this a bit. Basically, there's two things being achieved here. One is the avoidance of something negative for them, and the other is the creation of something positive for them. The negative optics would be if it were an open, normal inauguration and nobody showed up, because as we all know, nobody cares enough to show up for Joe Biden. It's not because of the virus, because that didn't stop people from showing up to burn cities down in the summer. It's because nobody cares about Joe Biden, and it would be bad optics for them to have the most popular president in American history have an under-attended inauguration. The good optics for them was bringing in literally tens of thousands of soldiers to occupy the grounds surrounding the inauguration, which, just like in every socialist regime throughout history, is basically done as a display of force to those who might be inclined to think that the regime doesn't necessarily represent the best interests of the citizens. It's basically to say, yeah, you'll do nothing. And they're right. So that brings us to our next red flag, which is the sudden patriotism. All of the sudden, everybody feels proud to be an American again. All of a sudden, everyone wants to just come together as Americans, despite the fact that they don't want to unify with the fascists, which are the 75 million Americans who voted for Donald Trump, and also despite the fact that they couldn't define to you what it actually means to be an American, other than just like living in America because they don't believe in American culture or national identity. And so this is done for the manufactured period of unity, which we predicted months ago, which exists to convince the masses that, well, Trump was the problem, not Republicans. No, 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 just Trump. Hey, we can all come together now. This is because Donald Trump was the only real threat to their power and to the establishment political machine. And so both Republicans and Democrats needed him gone. And they're going to to use their power and influence to convince the masses that, well, he was the problem in hopes that anyone who comes after Trump won't actually threaten their system and power structures. That's why the inauguration was coded in American flags. They don't do this at their debates or really anything else, but they did this that time 
because the PSYOP is different. It's about lulling the masses into normalcy again, which is just a return to the same policies of the last 30 years and nothing will get better. And it's generally going to get worse for the American people. So next one is that journalism is going to be arguably even more insufferable than it was throughout the last five years. Get ready for a barrage of articles talking about what Joe Biden's favorite ice cream flavor is or what Kamala Harris watches on Netflix in her free time. Because part of what's required to establish an illegitimate regime is humanizing and normalizing the people at the forefront of it, who typically are the most uninteresting sociopathic people in existence. But the media runs offense for them by promoting them in such a positive light. And the bright side is that a lot of these companies are going to shut down or experience layoffs since no one's really going to need to sit there and masturbate to anti-Trump propaganda anymore. But of course, some of it will survive to continue to churn out privatized propaganda on behalf of this administration. So just keep in mind that the same people who are sharing these articles about how quirky Kamala Harris is or <laughs> Joe Biden, he's just such a goofy, cute old man. Just keep in mind that these people would have been doing the same thing for Stalin and Mao without a doubt because they're sheep. And speaking of sheep, we have our next one, which is the boomer migration. We have to be very careful with this one. Basically, as we know, that which defines the boomer is the inability to recognize that things have changed. And so we can resultantly expect a certain proportion of Trump voters to get just as excited about whichever person the GOP props up as the authentic principled conservative without realizing that things have changed and without realizing what made Donald Trump so unique and important. So be on the lookout for the migration of the boomers from Donald Trump back to their neoconservative principles and establishment figureheads, which I'm probably tearing apart in my speech right now as you watch this. And again, this isn't going to be everyone, and I don't even think that it will be most people, but there will be a lot of people who do this. And so we need to be on the lookout for that and paying attention to that. Um, and the last one, this is the last red flag. Trust the plan. Just trust the plan. You know what I'm talking about. Here's the real tragedy with it. You had thousands of people buying into this thing, willing to storm the Capitol with Q flags. They want to go out. They want to own the libs at rallies. They want to go own the libs on Facebook.com and Twitter.com. But when it comes to actually taking action in their own lives, whether that be in their communities, whether that be building networks, infrastructure, anything, they're absent. And by the way, if it turns out to be true, like this whole Q thing that I should have trusted the plan, I'll be the first to admit that I'm wrong and I will apologize for my lack of faith. But until then, it seems to be like the quintessential conservative organization. Q for quintessential, because fundamentally, it is about deferring action. It's about trusting the plan, which just means not doing anything and assuming that it'll work out. We're not actually gonna conserve anything. We're not actually going to push back against the left. We're just gonna trust the plan and we're going to pay these people and we're going to buy their merchandise and their books because it's all part of the plan. No, it isn't, there is no plan. I mean, a lot of these circles, it doesn't exist, it's a PSYOP. And if we actually wanna be successful in the future, we need to act like it. No more PSYOPs, no more coping, no more deferring action, actually taking the time to be calm, to be rational, to be calculated, and to seriously work towards building power so that we can actually take our country back. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, also subscribe to the channel, also turn on post notifications, and of course, also share the video with a friend. I would do these things, but I can't because I'm in Arizona right now, so it's on you to do that. I know it's confusing because right now I'm behind the heck off commie desk. How could I be in Arizona? Is the heck off commie desk in Arizona? No, it's not. A little bit of a little bit of a a brain bender. A little bit of a a brain bender. That's not a real thing people say. Brain teaser? What the hell is a brain bender? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna betray my former self. Brain bender's epic. That that's catchy. That's a good slogan. The second I get done with you guys, I'm gonna go get on the phone with the USPTO and I'm gonna secure the IP for brain bender. Don't steal it. Don't steal. I'm stop the steal. I'll stop the steal. Swiper no swiping. Swiper no swiping. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Poof.